Good day, learners. I hope that you are all keeping well. Today, we are going to be looking at a review of the examination paper for the March Control Test. So, firstly, I will be reading the comprehension passage and going through the answers. So, uh, please stay tuned. Okay. From the time girls turn five, they dream of becoming Disney princesses. They have posters of Ariel on bedroom walls. They walk around with lunch bags and backpacks decorated with Disney princesses. They dress up as Elsa for Halloween. So why wouldn't they dream of actually becoming one? After all, they all lived happily ever after. Is there one Disney princess story where the heroine doesn't win? Whether it's Rapunzel, a damsel in distress, or Mulan, a female warrior, the enemy is always defeated and the princess lives happily ever after with her dashing prince. But are the Disney movies providing a positive Im image for little girls to imitate? To begin, the Disney characters are almost always beautiful. Think of every Disney princess movie you've ever watched and name one heroine that isn't good looking. The Disney prince or princess never has a flaw which puts an unrealistic image of beauty in viewers' minds. Aside from wicked witches and evil stepmothers, which character isn't beautiful, Jasmine, Ariel, Cinderella, and Snow White are all gorgeous. Even, be even the beast in Beauty and the Beast, after changing back from his monster state, becomes a dashing prince. Nobody is flawless, so Disney shouldn't make all of these characters unrealistically perfect. Because of these beautiful, beautiful characters, many people have the mindset that they should have a perfect body. Little girls look up to these characters at a young age, which leads to body image issues later on. Another common theme in Disney movies is a damsel in distress. In many princess movies like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, and The Little Mermaid, the man saves the princess while women are needy and helpless. This creates a false idea that girls need to be saved by a prince rather than be independent and raises an expectation that women need to be taken care of. This condition is called Cinderella complex after the Disney princess Cinderella. However, the idea that women are cared for by men is contrary to many households. In many homes, both the husband and wife work and are completely self-sufficient. And in some others, the wife provides for an entire family. This expectation must change. After all, we nominated women to lead our countries as our first president. Show me a Disney princess who is a scientist or inventor in a day and age where most STEM careers are filled by men. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It would be nice to have a Disney figure that encourages girls to take on these subjects. And before I finish, I just want to say that I'm not referring to all Disney princesses. I understand that not all princess films are like this. In fact, recently Disney has been changing. Now Disney producers are identifying these problems in their movies and are changing the approach on the traditional princess movie. Mulan portrays a traditional male role and saves scores of people. Anna saves the kingdom of Arendelle and Pocahontas is the only princess who doesn't end up with the boyfriend. But even in these movies, there's a dashing prince who saves the princess from some danger. Disney print movies still include these elements and portray these negative images. So I'm not saying not to watch Disney movies, but to take their lessons with a grain of, grain of salt. Don't try to mimic or idolize these princesses because Disney characters aren't the best role models. Okay, so now that we've read the comprehension passage, let's go through the answers. So the first, first question, refer to paragraph one, give the opposite, the gender opposite of the word heroine, and the word is hero. 2.1, the Disney prince or princess never has a flaw, 
which puts an unrealistic image of beauty in viewers' minds. Explain what the writer means in the above statement. So in the above statement, the writer says that Disney princess, princes and princesses are always shown as having perfect figures and beautiful or handsome faces that do not represent the reality of most people. Therefore, viewers begin to accept these stereotyped versions as the standard for beauty and may aspire to these unrealistic standards. So firstly, you have to explain the statement and then say, what are the effects of it? If you look at 2.2, give two examples of how young girls develop body image issues as a result of how Disney princesses are designed. So they may develop eating disorders as a result of wanting to have the perfect figures like Disney princesses. They may develop depression and or poor self-confidence and body image issues. They may feel the need to wear makeup excessively or to behave in other ways to gain popularity. So based on those responses, you would have got marks. If you look at question 3.1, damsel in distress. What does the above expression mean? A damsel in distress refers to a lady who is in trouble or needs to be rescued. If you look at 3.2, in your own words, explain what the Cinderella complex refers to. So the Cinderella complex refers to the idea that a young girl or woman is always in need of being rescued or is helpless without a male figure. If you look at 3.3, quote a word that tells you that the writer disagreed with the idea of the com Cinderella complex. So the word we was looking for there is false. If you go to 3.4, it would be nice to have a Disney princess, a Disney figure that encourages girls into taking these subjects. Do you agree with the writer's opinion discussed? So here you would have to basically give your own response, whether you agree or disagree, and justify with your own uh, uh, reasons. So your marks there would be given on your response. So if you said, I agree with the statement, it would encourage more learners to take on these difficult subjects and to enter into these fields. So as long as you said yes or no, and you backed up your answer with uh, responses. 3.5, STEM is an example of, so there the example, uh, it was C, initialism. So you're taking the first letter of every word, so initialism. Four, 4.1, Disney has been changing. In your own words, discuss the changes that Disney has incorporated into the most recent characters. So here you could say that the princesses are no longer just pretty faces. They are depicted more realistically. They are given more substantial roles and purposes. For example, Mulan, she saves many people. They are not shown as weak and unable to defend themselves. They do, not, they do not always end up with a husband or male hero at the end of the story. So there you would basically say, how is Disney train, uh, changing the traditional way of um, portraying movies and female characters in these movies? So if we move on to 4.2, refer to the last three lines of the paragraph. So I'm not saying two best role models. Is this a suitable conclusion to the passage justify your response? So here you would say yes. The writer gives the reader advice or his opinion. The last paragraph summarizes the points he raised in the article. So basically you have to say, is it suitable, suitable, yes or no, and explain your answer. So now we're moving on to section B. So here you were required to read the text and write a summary. Now many of you got this section wrong, where you just summarize the text, but you, you do not read the instructions that were freely written in bold print. So it says, carefully read text B below and write a summary on lessons we can learn from the movie Frozen. So you just not have, you, you, you didn't just have to summarize the text. You had to write a summary based on the lessons that we can draw from here. So some of the important texts uh, some of the important um, lessons that we could learn is in paragraph one would be, it is important to be surrounded by family who need, who you need to support you. So it is important to be surrounded by family who you need 
to support you in difficult times. So that is the lesson we learned from paragraph one. If you go on to paragraph two, the lesson that we can learn from there is being yourself is very important as it will lead to self-confidence and peace. So here, Elsa talks about how she realized that it's important for her not to pretend to be someone she isn't. The lesson that we can learn there is being yourself is very important. If you look at the next paragraph, the most important point there is learn to share or express your feelings with others who may be able to help you. So if sharing your emotions is very important. If you had something along those lines, you would have got two marks for the point there. If you look at paragraph four, the most important lesson that we can learn there is offer help to others to create a support network because you may need their help at some point. So here it's about offering, uh, offering help to others so that they may, you may need their help at some point, they will be able to assist you as well. If you look at number five, uh, the mo most important point there is don't give up easily on your dreams that may take hard work and patience, especially when it seems impossible. Okay, so just remember that these, this summary was based on you sifting out the lessons that we can learn, not just summarizing what this text is about, but the lessons that we can learn. That is where many learners went wrong, where you just summarized the text and you didn't uh, respond to the lessons that you can learn from this text, okay? So let's go to question three, language structures, editing skills. Right, so they tell you, read the following extract and answer the question. Okay. If you watched the hit animated movie, Frozen, five years ago and wondered if the sequel will be just as good, you can breathe a sigh of relief. It's great. The pre uh, pressure to capture the magic of the $1.2 billion success of Frozen must have been terrifying for all concerned at Disney, but you wouldn't know it from this confident, ambitious, and funny film. It's even clever enough to realize its original audiences as five years older, but still wanting the that fairy tale feeling. Anna and Elsa live, are living seemingly happy lives in Arendelle. Anna and Kristoff are deeply in love, but Elsa is troubled by a strange voice that keeps calling to her. This calling uncovers a deep magical curse held over an enchanted forest, which can only be broken with the help of, you guessed it, two sisters and a miniature snowman. Elsa must learn to channel her powers as she and Anna work with Kristoff and Olaf to learn more about the mystery of the kingdom. The quest begins. Frozen 2 feels like a more grown-up film with plenty of thrilling scenes lifting the film from its more emotional moments. The undeniable star of the show is Olaf, voiced by Joss Gard. The admi admirable snowman is hilarious, scene-stealing character that everyone will love. And while this new movie is missing a hit song, there's nothing close to Let It Go. It is a brilliant sequel that most kids will love. Right, so looking at refer to line two, you can breathe a sigh of relief. It's great. State the function of the exclamation as used in the sentence. So the function of the exclamation here is to show emphasis. It shows emphasis of the word. Two, why is the word frozen written in italics? It is written in italics to indicate that it is a title. If you're looking at three, correct the error of punctuation in line five. The, the, if you look at line five, the error was with the word it. It's not supposed to have a, an apostrophe. So it's it, I-T-S without an apostrophe. If you look at um, question four, wanting a fairy tale feeling, what does the writer mean by this expression? The writer means to feel like a princess in a fairy tale story. So to feel or to have a fairy tale feeling is to feel like a princess in a fairy tale movie or story. 
You look at five, Anna and Christoph are deeply in love, but Elsa is troubled by a strange voice that keeps calling to her. Is an example of B, it's a compound sentence. Six, you're looking at line 11, identify the punctuation mark used here and state its function. So the punctua uh, punctuation mark there was ellipsis and it was used to show a mission of the words in a sentence. Number eight, or number seven, sorry, give the antonym of the word immature, a miniature. So the word, uh, the antonym, which is the opposite of the word there is giant. Give a synonym of the word channel in the context of the sentence. So channel means to direct, move, focus, or control. Nine, give a definition of the word quest in context. So quest refers to a long or difficult search for something. If you look at number 10, Frozen 2 is written in italics. State two other ways that the title can be indicated. So the title can be indicated using bold, underlined, bold words, underlined words, single inverted, single inverted in direct speech. So it can be used, can be shown using these three ways. Number 11, state the function of the brackets in the sentence. And the function there is to give additional information. So here it is telling you that the character of Olaf is voiced by Joss Gad. So this gives you the additional information. If you look at number 12, give the part of speech of the underlined scene, of the underlined word, scene, dealing. And this is a compound adjective. Number 13, rewrite the last sentence in reported speech. Begin with, she said that. So if you are, you are writing the last sentence in reported speech, you would say, she said that while that movie was missing a hit song, it was a brilliant sequel that most kids would love. So, uh, and that was four marks. So learners, I hope that this has helped you to rectify your errors and to see where you have gone wrong. Um, I look forward to seeing you when you get, get back to school. Uh, take care and stay well.